welcome back to my channel my name is wolo the spelling is w-o-l-o -O. i live in winnipeg manitoba canada and i create content about life in canada and immigrating to canada the whole of last week i talked about the provincial nomination pathways for alberta for british columbia and then for manitoba but today I want to deviate from talking about immigrating to Canada and talk about um, life in Canada and the things that have been happening towards the end of last month and uh, something that happened recently um, that's based on an announcement that the Trudeau government made concerning banning 1,500 assault weapons in Canada. And this was done as a result of um, a gunman that um, just dressed up like an ROC MP officer and went about shooting people in Nova Scotia and killed about 19 persons, 19 to 23 persons there about, I think 23 persons in Nova Scotia. And this happened um, sometime towards the end of April, I think April 18th there about. As a result of that incident, um, the Trudeau government decided to ban 1,500 types of um, assault weapons or rifles um, owned by Canadians with license. Of course, before you get a gun, you have to have a license before you can get a gun. So, and some of these guns are used by hunters um, to hunt in Canada. So because of um, people being afraid of their safety and the incidents that happened, the government decided to ban these type of weapons. So I'll be showing you the video of his speech concerning the ban and um, so people who are outside of Canada can be aware that yeah the government is actually working towards keeping the Canadian environment safe for people and livable for people although there are some people who are not happy about this ban because of um, their businesses some people have businesses um, selling such weapons they are not happy about it and the government has actually talked about buying back those weapons within a two years period. So it's a buyback program. People who have such weapons should sell it back to the government. So it will become government property and no longer an individual property. So some people are not happy about it, while some people are actually happy about it. But anyway, um, I will show you the video of Trudeau's speech so that you can see uh, what he said concerning the ban. Today, we are closing the market for military-grade assault weapons in Canada. We are banning 1,500 models and variants of these firearms by way of regulations. These weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time. For many families, including many Indigenous people, Firearms are part of traditions passed down through generations, and the vast majority of gun owners use them safely, responsibly, and in accordance with the law, whether it be for work, sport shooting, for collecting, or for hunting. But you don't need an AR-15 to bring down a deer. So, effective immediately, it is no longer permitted to buy, sell, transport, import or use military-grade assault weapons in this country. To protect law-abiding gun owners from criminal liability until they can take steps to comply with this new law, there will be a two-year amnesty period and we will legislate fair compensation. But even amid uh, this um, terrible pandemic, uh, we have seen the impact uh, that someone with a gun uh, can have in devastating uh, the lives of uh, family members of communities uh, in our country. That's why uh, it is always uh, a good moment to move forward on measures that keep Canadians safe and that is why uh, we are moving forward uh, with this today. So that is Trudeau's speech and um, it might interest you to know that there are dangerous places in Canada and um, according to maclean's.ca there are several dangerous communities in Canada in 2020 and the number one is in Manitoba that's Thompson Manitoba um, if you go through the list you will see some other places in the whole of Canada so do not just say oh it's only Manitoba that has dangerous places no 
If you go through the list published by maclis.ca, I'll be posting the list so that you can see it. There are other communities and other places that are also dangerous, not just Thompson, Manitoba. There are other cities that are also dangerous. And I was even surprised to see one of the um, communities chosen for the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot, which is Timmins. Timmins is also tagged as one of the most dangerous places in Canada in 2020. So you can look at the list for yourself. And if you are interested in immigrating to Canada, um, just, you know, it's for your information. But one thing you should also know is that some of these dangerous places, it is not as if they are not livable. They are actually livable. People live there. And the um, kind of violence that happens, happens amongst a group of people. Um, essentially, if you are not doing anything bad, if you are not dealing on drugs or any kind of whatever, they won't come to you. They don't even have any business with you, maybe except for crime. Maybe if they want to just break in to steal things and sell, to raise money, to do their whatever. They don't usually bother people who are not, you know, in their way. They don't bother people. So people live in those places. It's not as bad as people would say it is, but it's in existence in Canada. That's why I am sharing this thing so that you do not think that Canada is just one um, hundred percent perfect society as portrayed by the media. Of course, we all want to be proud that we are living in Canada. It's a free place, it's a safe place to raise your family and all that. Yes, but there are other sides of Canada that people do not see. And that's why I am telling you about them so that you can you don't come and then start um, seeing all these things and be surprised that they're actually in existence in Canada. So that's it there. The second incident that happened in Canada um, is the flooding that happened in Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray is one of the biggest oil and gas communities in Canada and they had serious flooding, serious, serious flooding that, you know, disrupted a lot of activities, um, closed a lot of offices and stores and shopping malls and all that. I'll be showing you the video of the flooding that happened in Fort McMurray so that you can see what it is like and um, do not think that these things do not happen in Canada. They do happen. It's just that the media does not project them the way um, it happens in other communities around the world. This video shows ice chunks on the Athabasca River over about a one hour period. Thousands remain, though, out of their homes as the flooding emergency in northern Alberta continues. Tonight, financial support for evacuees and a tragic twist as the flood claims a life. In addition to the flooding, I also like to mention that there are some provinces that are prone to flooding during a certain period or during a spring period. And um, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador, they usually experience serious flooding and high wind levels. Um, that's the situation in those places because they have lots of beaches, lots of rivers and all that. So they usually experience flooding during this period and once it is summer everything dries up yeah so while we experience extreme cold in manitoba uh, new brunswick newfoundland and labrador prince edward island they experience high level of winds and flooding in those areas then british columbia also experiences earthquakes frequent earthquakes in british columbia so these are the things that actually happen in Canada and I decided to share them so that you are also aware for anybody planning to come to Canada so that you don't start hearing them in the news and then be surprised that, oh, these things are actually happening here. You don't know. Well, now you know that these things usually happen here in Canada. Um, so thank you so much for watching and uh, stay blessed and have a beautiful week ahead. See you in my next video.